All right. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode here on the Lure Lab, a part of the Serious Angler Network. And today, it is just me, the Captain Andrew Full. We do not have a guest, but we are breaking down my favorite post-spawn topwater lures to target largemouth and smallmouth with. Um, I believe these lures will work all over the country when you're in the post-spawn getting into summer. And I'm going to dive into colors and when to throw them, why to throw them, a couple mods that you can do. And it's going to be a really awesome episode. I hope you guys take away from this a lot of information, like the right rod, the line to use, when to throw each type of bait. And we're going to be primarily focusing on poppers and walking baits. So, which is some of my absolute favorite ones, but there is a third style topwater bait that I'm going to start with. So we're going to go from three, two, and one. I'm going to start with here, and that is a popping or a walking frog. In the post spawn, what happens immediately afterwards is a bluegill spawn, right? And everybody goes out there and targets post spawn fish, and they think that they're extremely random and here and there, but post-spawn fish don't have to be all that random. You just have to figure out what they are biting on. And I find this is one of the best times of year to catch fish consistently all day long. Yes, all day long, sunny, windy, cloudy, rainy, doesn't matter. All day long, you can catch fish on topwater lures if you're presenting it in the proper areas with the proper bait and the proper color of the bait. So, Number three, real fast, I don't have any with me. They are actually, I'm not sure where they are since I moved. I just ordered a bunch. I was hoping my order would be here today from Omnia, but it looks like it'll be here tomorrow. But that is a frog, popping frog and a walking frog. Spro, get them on Omnia, save 15% off. If you have never shopped there before using Sirius First or Sirius 10, if you've shopped before, all the baits are going to be down below in the this the down below in the description but a spro walking frog and a spro popping frog only three colors you truly need um down south you have shad spawn so you can get away with like an albino white colored glacier or there's another one i believe it's like tropical shad or something it's got some orange and yellow in it fantastic colors but my all-time favorite and i'm spilling some juice here i know a lot of people know about it but it's pretty much the only frog that I know that I throw like 99% of the time because I'm targeting something specific and we're getting to that in a second, but that is killer gill. There's just something about killer gill with the orange popping face that they just go nuts over. And a lot of people will tell you to stay away from throwing a popping frog because you will lose more fish. Yes, you will lose more fish with a popping frog, but I feel like you even get more bites and you can throw it in a little bit more unique situations. But make sure you throw a killer gill in your box. You will get a ton of bites. So with a frog fishing setup, because we're diving into it, before I get there, Hunter Shryock actually came on a few weeks ago and talked all about frog fishing. So everything, all the mods that you can do with it, go back and check out that episode. It was awesome. But my frog setup is a medium heavy rod, seven foot three. I personally am partnered with Alpha Angler. So I'm everything that I use rod related is Alpha Angler. But I use an Alpha Angler zilla which is a seven foot three medium heavy it's not too long it's not too short and it's got a deep parabolic bend and i think that's one of the most important aspects to a frog rod is you need something with a ton of butt but parabolic bend and a quick tip so you can walk that frog with ease so you're just snapping it making that thing pop and dart giving it nice rest areas but the number one key to it is target bluegill beds find bluegill beds and that is the hot the hot thing that I wanted to talk about is find bluegill beds because if you find bluegill beds you're going to get way more bites on a frog just for whatever reason that's the way it is there's other baits you can target bluegill beds with but today we're talking top water and the spro popping frog is a great place to start or even just the standard walking one where you're going to get a better hookup ratio if you wait a second when they take it but I feel like that popping one, especially immediately in the post spawn, is going to get way more attention. It's going to draw more fish, and it's going to get bit a lot better. Rod, reel is going to be an eight to one. 
Um, I like to throw it on a Tatula SV, which probably isn't the best reel to do it, or a Corrado K, like a 200 size. Eight to one, you can get away with seven four or seven one to one. But in my opinion, I think a faster reel is better. I'm not, I'm just trying to get that frog cover as much water. And when they get it, I've got to get on them quick because if you don't, you're going to lose them because they spit that thing out. They know it's not the real deal. Now, the next thing that you can do during the bluegill spawn period is throw a popper. And there's a couple different poppers that you can throw out there. You want something that you're going to work relatively slow. I'm going to grab another popper here. I got a couple on the bench already, but there's a there's a sneaky colored popper that you can get. And once again, I ordered some, and I was hoping that it would be here today, and it did not show up. And I apologize for the rattling for those who are tuning in. But I'm going to start here during the bluegill spawn, especially if you have a mayfly hatch and a bluegill spawn going on. There's one thing that you can never, ever turn your back on or look past, and that is a black popper. This one, um, my buddy Joe painted up for me probably 10, 11 years ago. Um, you can see that it has been used. It's caught a ton of fish. I don't use it as much anymore because it doesn't pop very well because I bash it off docks and just throw it wherever I can. But black, early morning, clear skies. There's just something about it that draws fish to it because a lot of bluegill during the spawn turn this black, purpley, green color, and they go nuts over it. And you just want to walk it over top of them bluegill spawning beds. But the fun thing about poppers is there's a bunch of different choices that you can buy, and they all do relatively different things. Like you have chuggers, and you have walkers, and you have spitters. Spitters and chuggers kind of fall in the same line. And a couple of my favorite chuggers, which is pretty much the only type of popper I use if I want it to walk, I go back to a popping frog. I can walk a popping frog way better than a popper. So for those who for those who are tuned in on YouTube or on Spotify, reach out to my social media. I want to know what the best walking popper is. And I'm not a fan of the Spro one, so don't even say the Spro one. But I have heard that some do walk really well. Um, but a bunch of different poppers that you can buy and try out and see which ones you like the best. But these ones are my favorites and my top three. Um, this one's a little bit older and I use it whenever on some of our lakes, we have a rock bass spawn right around the same time bluegill spawn happens. And I will throw like a gold shiny foiled lucky craft G splash with a black back. But there's a key here that I absolutely love. And I think this is important on every single popper that you buy is having something accented that they can target. Same with the Spro Popping Frog. Sama has the orange lip on it, and then a little bit on the belly on the underside, and I think that helps those fish come up and grab it a little bit better when there's something there. Um, so this G-Splash is a great micro popper. It's not the smallest popper, but it's a great smaller popper to get a lot of bites, and I really like gold and black for rock bass when there's rock bass around and that works incredibly well with small mouth bluegill spawn still we're talking about arc z pop probably one of the best casting top waters i have thrown yet i just started experimenting with it the only thing i will mention that i do not like about this bait is the fact that it does not have the painted area right here like the g splash does and for those who are listening on spotify i apologize this is a very visual episode so after you're done listening and you want to head over to youtube we greatly appreciate the double dip but um yeah so this arc has a fantastic mouth design to it the one thing that i love about it has a tungsten transfer system in it so you can cast it super far z pop this one's in the bluegill pattern big long beautiful feathers this thing chugs pretty well. Small, minute twitches make it kind of pop across the surface. Mayfly hatch, bluegill spawn. You can never beat a popper. My personal absolute favorite popper, though, for the post spawn, and I've caught more fish on it than any other popper there is on the market, and it is a chugger. It was designed <clears throat> by Rick Clun way back in the day. It comes straight out of the box with Fantastic hooks, gamakatsu round bends. That is the Labina Rio Rico. Uh, there's plenty of different colors you can choose. And I don't know if you've noticed this. If you're watching on YouTube, I've held up three different colors at this point. Gold, black, 
a bluegill, actually four, and now an albino. Those four colors are fantastic. But the Rio Rico has the most drawing power. It chugs really well. You can fish it really fast or real slow. So when you're when you're fishing it fast, you're like chug, 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 chug. You're popping that rod tip and making it come to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or you can give it pop pops. So it spits the water out just a little bit out in front. And it has incredible drawing power. And I've seen some smallmouth come from a very long distance to eat a Rio Rico and largemouth as well. Now, the setup that I use is a seven foot medium, medium heavy, depending on the blank that you get. The one that I love for popper fishing is a seven foot elf angler top hammer. And you can do two different setups. And I haven't figured out which one I like more, but I can tell you which one I've used most. There's a braid to mono setup. Some people do braid to fluoro. And I use mono all the time. So we'll start at the braid to mono setup because I don't mess with floral with any type of top water. <clears throat> but braid to mono, when you tie that leader, it's only going to be about this long. You want 30 pound braid, you want something that's super smooth, doesn't make a ton of noise. So you're able to cast it super far. And that mono helps absorb it when you lean into the fish and set the hook. Now, with the popper, when you eat them, you're never going to drive the hook up. It's going to be a big sweep, so you can drive the hooks across the fish's face. <clears throat> and then the same reel as the frog reel, like a 7-4 or an 8-1 to one is a great choice because when that fish gets on and he starts swimming away, you got to deliver the goods. Now, the rod is super important when it comes to this because it is a treble hook bait. You don't want something that's like a pool cue. You don't want it to be straight at the fish. When one bites it and you lean into them, you want that rod to have a deep parabolic action to it, but you don't want a glass rod for popper fishing. You want graphite because you want that rod to have snap, but it's got to be soft. That's why I like a medium to a soft, a medium heavy, and the Elf Angler 7-foot top hammer has become my favorite popper rod that I have ever used to this point. Now, mono... There's all kinds of different monos out there, and they all float, right? Like they're supposed to. 15-pound um, test is the happy place for me when I throw a popper because when I'm popper fishing, it's always combative fishing. I don't cover a ton of water with a popper. I'm up dirty. I'm pitching it around trees, giving it like three or four pops, getting trying to call fish out or throwing it by docks and walking it down the length of a dock and making fish come up and eat it. And I truly only will use a popper when there's two things, a mayfly hatch that I've already spoken about or a bluegill spawn. And we're going to get into the next style of topwater bait in a moment, but I kind of want to go through the hooks that you can change out here real fast with like a G splash. So with the G-Splash, what I have found is they're smaller hooks. It's a size 6, I do believe. So when you go to replace these out, I always like a round bend style hook when you're changing out hooks on a popper. I don't want an EWG style, even this ARC one here. Actually, I want to go back to this ARC one because I believe these are BKKs that they put on here. And these are just insanely sharp hooks coming out of the box, but the lucky craft, I always change the hooks out and you can see this one's bent out. So I have to, I believe I put Gamakatsu's on here and they were size sixes and I bought the treble hook one right from the box, but size sixes always change out the hooks on most of the poppers that you get. Another one would be like uh, the super pop R comes with these crappy bronze hooks, change them out to size six ST36s or Ichikawa makes a really good hook. So does BKK, but make sure you change them out. You will land way more fish. Now, the final bait, we had an episode on this a while ago, was our top three walking baits. But in the post-spawn leading into summer, I feel like a walking bait can be your best friend all the way into fall. And I have a couple different ones. You have walking spitters or chuggers. You have spook styles, and then you have more glidey type that might spit a little bit. So I, I have quite a few here. Some you can't get anymore. Some you can still get. Um, and I'm going to start with like the OG walking gliding bait, and I'm sure everybody knows what it is. And I'm going to talk about 
the best hooks to put on each one of these because I change out almost all the hooks unless they come with really good hooks right out of the package. So the first one of a walking, gliding style top water bait, not your quick chopping chuggers, but with no surprise, it is the Hedden Super Spook. And really, when it comes to spook fishing, you only need three colors. You need like a, a chrome, you need something that's hybrid, like a boning chrome, and then you need a bone. Except for one instance that I think is undimit, like untalked about is through the day. So in the morning, great color choice, bone. But as you get through the day and it gets brighter out, and you know fish are still chasing bluegill around or shad around, and you find them and they're schooling, you can go to more of a translucent colored walking bait. And this one, oh, this is my last one. I'm so sad they discontinued it because it's a really unique spook style bait. And it is a jackal bow stick. And what I love about this bait is there's like an air chamber right here. You can see how it sees through my, my hand going by it. So when this thing walks from side to side, it created a beautiful, unique bubble trail and i feel like it got a ton of bites but you can see that this one's translucent and it's like a ghost minnow sexy shed type deal i will throw this one when you get the most unthought about time to throw topwater baits and that's super bright high sun and no wind there's something about a spook style bait that's translucent and you have bait busting on a sunny, calm day that they will just come unglued on a translucent top water. Now, if it's cloudy, raining all day, throw your super spook and bone or something bright. You're going to get a ton of bites on it. Now, we're going to move into the spitting, chugging, walking type baits, real hard, fast cutters. And I do have an honorable mention that I'm going to throw out there, too, that I don't have any of here. They're actually in my boat at the moment as I'm recording this. These are just the top waters that I had in the basement laying around. So the first one that comes up is an OG, Skeet Reese. I think this is actually Skeet's Magic, is a Lucky Craft Gunfish. Uh, I believe this is the 115 size. You can see how it's clear. Not my favorite color. This is just the one I had in the basement. I've actually caught a lot of smallmouth on this one particularly. On the same style of day, like you get out on the water, it's 630. The sun is already high. There's no wind, but it has a chartreuse belly, so it has a ton of drawing powder. It's loud. It has a cupped lip, so when you're hitting that rod real hard and the thing is shooting all over the water, it's spitting, it's making a ton of noise and commotion. And then when you kill it, it floats like this. So when the small ear or a large mouth comes up and looks and nudges it, they get hooked by the back hooks because it's sitting almost vertical in the water. And I think that's a unique characteristic about some of these top waters as to where a spook will just lay flat on the water like this. When you get your spitters and chuggers, a lot of times they go head up. And tail down so a fish comes up and slurps it they'll only get the back hook but that feather is dangling there enticing them to bite it and once again i apologize to everyone who's tuned in and you hear all the rattling and it's because i'm showing specific baits but the gunfish one of my absolute favorite colors in this is american shad it's super bright super shiny it's got like a foily scaly finish to it just omits a ton of light it's super loud catches a bunch of fish now, in the chugger unique style walking bait class, the one that I used to love and throw all the time was a Lucky Craft Sammy. It has the most unique top water. It, it's not even a spitter or a chugger. It, it's a soft spitter, but that thing cuts and darts and does all kinds of crazy things. And sometimes it's almost uncontrollable. As we progress out of the Lucky Craft and into a, a newer style top water that has come out in an, in an older one. And these are very similar baits in the way they are designed. And both of them will catch you a ton of bass. I finally got my hands on one of them. And the other one is my tried and true favorite top water bait of all time. And I'm going to start with the new one that was introduced to me by my buddy, Wes Logan. Um, and that is the outlaw by arc and Better Than Bone, I believe is the color it's called. Better Than Bone. And uh, this thing is bone, but it's bright, bright white. Early morning. 
it's very loud, but it, I believe that is a tungsten transfer weight that's making that clunk, clunk, clunk. This thing works easily as you're cutting it through the water. And it's got a little bit of a chugger on it as well. So it's going to make that nice bubble trail. Just there's something about bone colored top water that if there's any one color that you can buy in poppers, uh, popping frogs, walking baits, it's bone. You can't beat it. But Arc Outlaw, check them out. They are sweet. They cover a ton of water. And there's something that is unique to these that I'm going to talk about in a second with my other bait that I have to add on. So this is a bait modification that I do because I find that it helps me walk the bait better. My favorite top water of all time, more than a spook, more than a popper, is the original one was made by Reaction Innovations. And then there's been a couple copycats, a couple ones that have come out the same blank, same mold, yada, yada, yada. But this one's a little bit harder to find. They come out every once in a blue mood, and that is the Tekel Kick Knocker. And it's basically the same thing as the original Vixen, but if you try to find an original Vixen, they're probably going to cost you $200 to $350 on eBay. And I've never had one, but I've seen people throw them, and they just straight up catch fish. Now, straight out of the box, the Vixen needs two things. Or this Tekel Kick Knocker needs two things. You can see this thing's been absolutely chewed if you're watching on YouTube. But the first thing I do is change out the hooks. These are size four owner ST 36s. And I add a split ring to the nose here. And that's why I like the arc one. It comes with one when you buy it right out of the box, but the kick knocker does not. And when you want, when you're using a walking bait, you should always put a split ring. I have to put split rings on all my spooks. It just helps keep the line away especially when we get into the line here in a second it helps keep that line away from following up in your treble hooks so the setup rod and reel is going to be identical but there's gonna be one thing that i do different for my poppers as i talked about poppers i use mono when i go over to the tackle or the arc fishing outlaw i am a straight braid guy 30 pound test and i a lot of people will tell you don't tie it directly to the bait, put a bumper on, and absorb impact, yada, yada. I don't care. I am a straight braid right to the split ring on the nose. And I ultimately, that allows me to cast it super far. It allows me to work that bait from a long distance. And when one grabs it, I'm actually able to hook it and drive the hooks home. Uh, it's a 100% confident thing. I know a ton of people who throw it on like 17, 20 pound mono. I just feel like a thinner line diameter is going to give that bait more action. You just have to be careful with that braid not following up on your front hook because it does happen from time to time. Even with adding a split ring on, uh, don't ask me what size this is. I actually, the split ring on the kick knocker I added came off of a broken Vision 110. So I think it's like a size six, but I'm probably wrong. And I forgot to mention the hooks. So I talked about the hooks here, size 4 ST36s, which I have right here. But for the spook, I'm going to digress here real fast. The hook that I really, really like, and I was turned on to this by a good friend that's been on the show. He talked about Carolina Rig, Steve Louie. Give him 100% credit. It is size 2 in the Ichikawa Kamikari treble. It's got that nano code on it. It's super sharp. I mean, I'm holding it here in my hand, and it's just, it's just sticking to me because the hooks are wicked sharp. And it's, if I can't, I can't tell you enough to always change out your terminal tackle. Don't leave stock hooks on unless they come with like BKKs or Gamakatsus or owners right on the pack. Um, it's just something about having higher quality terminal tackle on your baits that is going to allow you to get more fish in the boat. And the same rod as I throw in the poppers, I forgot to mention that same reel, seven to one, eight to one. Rod is an alpha angler top hammer because I want to be able to cast super far, but I don't want it too long of a rod to where my rod tip is hitting the side of the boat or hitting the water as I'm trying to work my bait. And that's virtually it. Like you can put 
these top water baits in your boat, you can have a frog, a popper, and a spook tied on on any given day in the post spawn period and go to any body of water across the country. You can tell me I'm wrong, but you can go anywhere in the country and put a bunch of bass in the boat on any given day. They will always eat top water in the post spawn. And these are some baits that you can pick up and are easily accessible that you can go out and get more fish in the boat. So we're going to wrap it up here. I hope everybody enjoyed this episode of top water baits in the post spawn leading into summer. These are baits that I have tied on on my deck when I'm tournament fishing, fun fishing, and even guiding all summer long. It's just one of the most fascinating, awesome things to do. You get a ton of bites with it. Some days are better than others, but you're going to get giant bites. You're going to put a ton of fish in the boat. So make sure you check out some of these baits. If you're listening on YouTube, leave a comment down below. Maybe what your favorite baits are to use on top during the post spawn. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here. If you've hung out this far, we greatly appreciate you. And throw us a thumbs up. Thank you to all of our loyal listeners on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And if you haven't at this point, please leave a review. It helps this podcast be shown to more bass fishermen like you and I. And I just want to be able to bring all the best information that I possibly can to everyone who views in every week. And just a side note, head on over to the Serious Angler Network website page and pick up some merch we have some awesome Lure Labs, some Serious Danglers, some Serious Angler Network, and Business from the Bass Boat merch. Super high quality, comfortable. I wear my brown fin tuna hoodie just about every morning when I'm out on the lake or my Lure Lab hoodie. Uh, we have some hats. It's um, like, it's just, uh, we appreciate all of the support that all, everyone here gives us every week and everybody who tunes in. And we hope everyone has a great summer. And we will catch you next Saturday for the next episode on The Lab.